Hey friends, welcome back to another Monday with me. It's been a couple of weeks since I have filmed a day in the life for you, and I have a huge to-do list today, so I thought I would take you along. I wanted to start my week by washing our living room blankets and all of the covers from our couch pillows. I do this, well, I wash the blankets probably twice a month, and I probably do the pillows once a month. Now I am filling in my teenagers planners for them for the week. This is something that we are just now starting. We have done various things in the past to hold them accountable with their chores and their schoolwork and even their extracurriculars. Sometimes it just helps me to see on paper what all they have going on for the week. Next, I need to tidy up this corner in the kitchen, put the electric kettle away, and I've got a new space to store my empty jars. I'll show you in a minute. Then I need to get those pillow covers started. I wash them in hot water with OxyClean and a little detergent, and I, my dryer is occupied, so I can't put those towels in the dryer yet. A dear friend of mine is moving to Colorado and she is downsizing some and she offered us this beautiful solid wood corner cabinet and I thought it would go perfectly behind our bedroom door and for now I'm going to use it to store our empty canning jars. I may use it for a different purpose at another time but for now this is perfect particularly in the winter when I have lots of empty jars. While I'm folding laundry, I thought I would give you a little health update. If you've been here with me since the beginning of my channel, you may have seen comments from viewers here and there um, over the last couple of years comment on how the right side of my thyroid looked enlarged, like they could see it in some of my old videos. And I had the left side removed in 2009. There were some concerning spots they thought was cancer and it was not, thank goodness. But while I was at my annual well check a few weeks ago, my doctor actually mentioned the same thing. So I had an ultrasound done and within about 45 minutes of the ultrasound, my doctor called and said, there's a pretty big spot we wanna take a look at. I'm gonna schedule you for a biopsy. So I actually don't have the biopsy scheduled right now. I am meeting with a surgeon who could potentially do the fine needle biopsy, but it is an extremely painful procedure that I have had done before. So we're going to see what my options are before we move forward. I'll keep you posted on that. I just wanted to let you know because so many of you actually commented and suggested that I get it checked out. Now I'm going to go ahead and get supper started because I am trying something new and I am really excited about it. I am gonna make ravioli. I asked for some ravioli stamps for Christmas and I received them. They're actually really inexpensive. It's a set from Amazon. I can link it below if anybody is interested. But I thought, you know, pasta or stuffed pasta like ravioli or tortellini are one of those things where you can very easily make up a filling and have a really delicious, somewhat fancy dinner with very little ingredients and things that, even scraps that you can find in your fridge and freezer, which is exactly what I did for today's filling. I will also include my pasta recipe below. Pasta is such a simple thing to make and you can kick it up a notch by making sourdough pasta or in this case, I had some freshly ground wheat that I used to make my pasta dough. My dough was a little bit on the dry side initially, so I added probably two or three extra tablespoons of water before I got it just right. I went to pull my plastic wrap out of the cabinet and ripped the, pl the uh, cardboard open. Now, this is like over half a mile of plastic wrap. I actually write the date on it when I first get it because I'm always curious to see how long it lasts. I think my last box lasted over seven years. So I taped it up really well because we probably have about six years to go. Now I am pulling some things out of the fridge and freezer to make the filling for the ravioli. Now, I thought what was in this super cube was ricotta. And then I go to pull the second one out and I think, this looks like butter. So I broke off a little piece and realized, yep, it's butter. So I froze that or took it out of the super cubes and stuck it in a gallon bag to put in the freezer for later use and then had to go on a hunt for my ricotta. Homemade ricotta is so simple to make. You simply use the whey left over from making mozzarella cheese and add a little vinegar when it gets to the right temperature and voila, you strain it and you have ricotta cheese, which is so amazing to me, the things that we can make with all of Penny's milk. 
Now it is time to roll out my pasta dough. I had wrapped it in plastic wrap and let it rest on the counter for about 30 minutes while I cleaned up the kitchen, got my pasta making things out, as well as letting that ricotta defrost. The dough is a bit darker than I usually make since I used freshly ground wheat this time instead of just all-purpose flour. You can really use a combination of different flours, um, all-purpose, freshly ground wheat, kamut, einkorn. You can add sourdough discard. It's pretty amazing. Pasta is very forgiving in my experience. Now, I got my pasta machine at somewhere like TJ Maxx or Marshalls years and years ago, probably close to 20 years ago, for about $14.99. I think I still have the price sticker on the box. I will link to one that's identical to this. In fact, I can probably find the same brand on Amazon, and I will link it below. It's so incredibly simple. It fits in a small box. I just keep it in an upper cabinet where it's not in the way since I don't use it all that often, but it's convenient. There is no need, in my opinion, to spend a bunch of money on an expensive KitchenAid attachment or even a separate pasta maker machine, you know, and that's the only job that it does is make pasta. Now, I will say if there were to come a time when I wanted to be able to make all like 100% of our pasta at home, I might consider one of those really neat pasta machines. My simple pasta gadget will make any kind of flat pasta. So I can make fettuccine noodles, lasagna noodles, spaghetti noodles. Um, I could even probably hand cut the pasta myself to make like bow tie, but I couldn't make any tubular pasta like elbow macaroni or penny pasta. My ricotta is about 90% defrosted. I'm just using this spoon to break up the little bits that are left that are still partially frozen. This was a combination of breakfast sausage as well as about a pound of Italian sausage. So the flavor should be really good. I'm just adding a little extra Italian seasoning as well as some homemade seasoned salt, getting all of that mixed up. And then comes the fun part. Now I am 100% winging it from here on out. <laughs> I grab my cutting board to use as a work surface. Since so many of my pasta sheets are different widths, I needed to grab a smaller ravioli stamp and then I got started. So I realized now looking back on this that I added a little too much filling for the size of this little bitty ravioli stamp. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the filling was delicious, but I ended up with like air pockets and I learned a lot with this first time around. So I'm actually really looking forward to making more in a couple of days that I'm gonna share with my book club this weekend. I quickly realized I was going to need some water just to, like you see here, use my fingers to run along where I want to seal the pasta. I do the same thing when I'm making calzones. You just want to slightly dampen your dough before you crimp it together, and then it tends to stay sealed while it's baking or boiling. Now, one thing that I learned, <laughs> you can see here, um, you really need to kind of press your pasta down around your filling because if you don't, like this next one, for example, that one right there, you end up with a lot of air inside and you can't help that air escape once you have sealed up your ravioli. What I found is then you're, all the ravioli that are full of air end up wanting to float and you don't want all of them to want to fight to float to the surface when you're trying to boil them. Plus, having a nice tight seal on each piece of pasta just makes for a prettier finished product. My thought behind learning to make ravioli is that it is so incredibly versatile. I am excited to explore all sorts of different filling recipes, as well as different sauces. You could use pesto, red sauce, white sauce. This was my finished product. I ended up with 87 of these little ravioli. Now that I'm more familiar with the width that this pasta needs to be to use this particular stamp, I should be able to get more ravioli out of the same amount of dough next time. This is the finished product. I used a tomato cream sauce and topped with Parmesan and it was delicious. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to subscribe and join us in the comments. I love getting to know each of you. You can also find me on Instagram at Pursuit of Simplicity. Thanks for watching.